today um, we are doing activity 2.1.3. Um, what I'm going to do today is actually do it for you um, and basically just have you follow along. Um, and once you complete this, um, submit a screenshot at the end, you'll be done with today's lesson. Um, so the first thing, 2.1.3. So I need everybody to get onto my PLTW, um, 2.1.3. Um, now we're going to start actually making an assembly in Onshape. To, before we do that, we need to look at there's different types of motion. There are six total types of motion in any 3D space. You can move in the X, Y, Z direction. That's what translation is, so just moving. You could also rotate about every axis for a total of six different ways to move. Any combination of these will let you do any sort of motion. What I want you guys to do is pause this video, go to my PLTW213, and I want you to watch this video yourselves. This video will describe and show you examples of the six different types of motion that we can have. Once you've watched that, I want you to come do the same thing on, pause this video and on 213, I want you to watch this video. This is a really important video that shows you what types of joints we can have. Joints are the different ways that we can assemble two parts. Again, this whole unit is talking about how do we assemble parts together. Well, this video will describe in detail the different types of joints that we can use. You need to make sure you have an understanding of what these are so that when we use them, it's not just a meaningless name. So what I'm gonna do after you watch those videos, I want you to come back to this video and we're going to pick up and do the selfie stick assembly, but we're going to do it together. The first thing you need to do is all these parts are made for you. So you need to come up at the top of 213. You need to download the inventor selfie stick parts. Do not download Fusion 360. You want the inventor parts. What you'll see is it'll download a folder. And these I've already done before. Oops, I deleted on accident. I'm going to download the Inventor selfie stick files. It's a zip file. If you double click it, your computer will open it automatically into a folder. When you open that folder, these are all the parts that you need. And however, this part is extra. It has the longest name and it ends with .iam. I need you all to delete that file from your folder and then we're gonna leave it. If we come back here, if you're following along with this, we would be at step six right now. What we need to do is McMaster Car is a company that sells all sorts of screws and bolts and different things to build stuff. If we click this link, it opens their part catalog. The instructions say, search for this specific part because we need to add that to our assembly file. So I'm going to search for that part number. I'm going to just copy paste it and it'll take me directly to the part that I need. I'm going to click on product detail. It's got all sorts of details, including, this should be familiar, a part drawing. This is why part drawings are important so that you can communicate information to an audience so they know exactly how big this is just by looking at your drawing. Off to the side, you can download 3D files of this part. Well, what we need is the 3D step file. We're going to hit save, and it will download that 3D model file to your computer. Well, then I'm going to go back to where it was downloaded, and this part that I just downloaded from McMaster Car, I'm going to put it in my folder and add it to my list of the parts I need. Now we have all the parts we need in that one folder. At this point, we can get rid of McMaster Car. We're going to then assemble all these parts so that it looks like this selfie stick right here. So what I need to do is open up Onshape. First, I need to keep all my files organized. I don't want a big mess of files, so I'm going to create a specific folder called 2.1.3 Selfie Stick. I'm going to create that folder and open it up. I'm going to put everything in this folder since it's all part of the same project. To do that, 
Onshape is in the cloud, so I need to import the files in order for me to use them. So when I import, I'm going to go back to my downloads, open up the folder that I just had, and I'm going to select all of these parts. The easy way to do it if you select the first part, hold the shift key, select the last part, it'll highlight everything in between, and you're going to open them. We're going to put import to a single document, and it'll start to put these files into Onshape. Now it might take a bit, these need to load. So it'll start to load all these files into Onshape one by one. Right? So you'll see them slowly populate depending on your init speed. Mine's pretty slow right now. But it'll start loading up all the parts into Onshape. Then I'll be able to use them in Onshape. So while those are finishing loading, what you can do is I want to create a new document that I'm going to call assembly. Actually, I'm going to call it selfie stick assembly. This is a new blank document that I'm going to use to actually assemble all these parts to make my combined selfie stick. So when I load this up, it'll look just like it always does when you start a new Onshape file. They call them documents, but it'll be blank. What we need to do is we need to go down to this assembly tab. We're not making parts. We have them. We're going to assemble them this time. Up here, you'll notice these are all brand new icons. These are the tools that we use when we assemble parts. The first thing, we need to put parts in. So we go to insert. Now, I didn't make anything from my Part Studio tab, otherwise those would show up right away. I need to go to Other Documents, click on My Files, open up the folder that I just made, and you see a list. These are all the parts that I put and uploaded. These are all the parts I need. What you have to do is you have to put them all in. So I click on the first one, click it, and I'm going to place it in my workspace. I'm going to go back to my folder and I want to do the second file. Click it and then place it in the workspace. Then you're going to just keep going one by one. I just moved down the list. We need the stick adapter. We'll put that in there. The shoe top. Put that in there. Shoe bottom. Place that in there. The shoe itself. back, the phone holder top, phone holder bottom, and then the last one is this um, kind of thumb screw that we imported from McMaster Car. I'm going to put that in here as well. And then I'm done inserting parts, so I'm going to click the green checkbox to finish. These are all of my parts. Step one, we always want to fix one part that's going to be stuck in place. It's going to act as our kind of ground zero. We're going to build everything off of it. I want the handle, so I'm going to fix that. I right-click the part, and I clicked fix. Now, I've already fixed it, so it says I'm wanting it to unfix. But once you fix it, it locks it in place. You can see right here this icon says, hey, it's stuck in place. That's what we want. To assemble this, we need to put the slider in the handle. The big question is, what joint do we want to use? I want you to pay attention. There are arrows on each icon that show you what kind of motion is allowed. The first one, it's called a fastened mate. It's the same thing as a rigid mate that you learned up here. It's basically like you glue the parts together and they're stuck together. There's no motion. Revolute means it can rotate and that's it. A slider mate means it can slide up and down. Planar can move in one plane. Cylindrical mate, it can rotate and slide. Pin and slot. Ball mate or a parallel mate. Now, the type of motion we want, we want this rod to be able to slide in and out and rotate. So I'm going to choose the cylindrical mate. It will allow me to slide and rotate. Now this is where we have to be careful. Do you see this yellow icon that pops up? This is a specific point that I'm going to mate to a different specific point. 
I'm going to pick this very middle of my slider rod. I'm going to pick that point. Then when I hover over the other part I want to connect it to, I want to do the same thing, and I want to mate it to the very center of the handle. And when you do that, it will mate them together. Now you'll notice this play button will show you what type of motion is allowed. It's showing you rotation can happen and sliding. So you can confirm, yes, that is the type of motion I want. So I hit OK. You can actually take this pin and you can slide it. This is moving the way that we want it, so we know we picked the correct mate. Next thing we need to do is we need to connect this bracket to the end of the slider. This, we're going to use a fastened mate. We're going to uh, pretend that we're going to glue this together so that they're stuck. This adapter is going to be stuck to the end. So we need to go look at the bottom of this and say, I want, if I hover over the bottom face, all these white dots appear. I want the one in the very middle of the hole. I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to connect that to the very bottom of this pin. See how my yellow icon is selecting that point? That's what I want. Now in this case it worked. Sometimes your mates will go like this. It's backwards. Well this isn't good. I don't want this. I click this big arrow and it'll flip it to a different direction so that it's the direction you want. So that's all I want and then we can confirm. Yep, that attached face to face, that's exactly what I want. Next thing I need to do is I need to put this piece inside that slot. Now I need to figure out what type, type of joint do I want. Well I don't want it to be glued together, I want it to be able to rotate. It'll be like a hinge that I could swivel. Well to do that I'm gonna choose the Revolute Mate. It's gonna connect two parts and only allow it to rotate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in, I'm gonna select the very middle outside of that hole. I want that to be connected right here. I want those two points to be touching. Do you see how we have a bit of a problem though? It's flush on this side but there's a big gap. I want it to be right in the middle. Well we're gonna use something called an offset. Instead of joining them on top of each other we're gonna offset them a little bit. Now, normally you would measure this, but um, I didn't have it measured, so I guessed. And 0 0.025 is the offset. Do you see how it moved it so that it's evenly centered? That's exactly what we want, so we're going to complete that mate. Next thing I want to do is this bracket right here needs to go right in line with this piece. These are going to be attached as if they were glued in place. So I'm going to take the very middle right edge. You see this dot here? I'm going to connect that point with the very middle edge over here. Do you see how it put the parts on top of each other? It's in the wrong direction. Well I can easily fix that by just flipping my arrow. It'll do the same thing but turn it backwards. That's what I want that surface with the top surface that looks great so I'm gonna hit OK next thing this pin needs to be poking out of that hole right it's gonna look like this that pins gonna stick out and hold the base securely I want that to be a rigid I'm going to do fastened. It's going to be like they're gluing together. I'm going to glue the very middle of the base. That point I'm going to connect with this point. You see how it nestles inside there and protrudes? Because we need to attach something here. That looks like what I want. I'm good. Now I need to attach the phone holder on the bottom, if you'll notice there's a hole. Well that's exactly what goes inside my pin here. That I also want to be a 
a fastened or rigid mate. So I'm going to say, okay, the very bottom middle, the center of that hole, needs to attach to the middle of that pin because that's where the surface ends. Now notice it did it backwards. It's not what I want. It did what I told it to do, but the wrong direction. I just have to flip it the other direction. So that looks good. Now, this is the, the bracket that needs to go on the end of our selfie stick. That one, I want a slider mechanism. I want this to be able to slide in and out to grip my phone. So I'm going to do a slider, and I'm going to say, OK, the middle bottom of that is going to get connected to the middle bottom of that. Now you notice it did it backwards again. I want it the other direction, so that's perfect. The other thing I want you to note is technically this is incorrect. This should be sticking past here, so I need to do an offset. I want to offset. Actually, this probably won't let us do it. We won't worry about that. So I need to redo this. Actually, one great way that I can fix that is the slider mate. I want to put the middle bottom of that slider in the middle. Flip it. That's what it should look like. That's what we want. The last piece is the screw that I got from McMaster Car. That goes right inside this hole. Now, this is a screw. It's supposed to be tightened down or fastened together. So I'm going to use the fastened mate. I want the very middle Do you see how my yellow icon is in the center? That's where I want it, so I'm going to click. And then I want it to be, it's going to be flush with this surface, so I want that point right there. Now it did it in the right direction. It's lined up. Boom. And there you have it. There is your assembled selfie stick. All the parts were made for us this time. All we needed to do is use these assembly commands, these mates, and connect the parts in the appropriate way. What you can do is you can play around with this. You can drag it, and the parts will move according to their degrees of freedom. So you can see this can rotate, and it can bend and slide. That's what we want. Now this one doesn't have the correct limits. The part shouldn't go sliding into, right? I don't have my limits set. We're going to talk about that later. You can actually create a limitation. But at this point, all I need you to do is take a picture of your assembled selfie stick. So again, we're going to go here, print. Inside this dotted box is what's getting printed. So I want to make this nice and big. I'm going to hit download image. All you need to do for today's assignment is take this file, go into Google Classroom, for 213 and you need to attach that screenshot of your assembled selfie stick and that's all we need to do for today. Again, I went kind of fast. I needed to get through this, um, but you guys have this recording. Feel free to watch it at slow speed or watch a part, pause it, do that step, and then continue on with the next step. Um, so thanks guys and make sure to get that submitted um, by tomorrow at midnight.